and then bring up a, a completely new and unique framework. Like I've never seen that happen, right? What actually happens is that people just follow in along with the trend. Okay, and that's what uh, yesterday that um, Imam Safwan talked about when he said the verse of the Quran it says uh, a person collapses through the heavens. This is when someone leaves the way of Islam, collapses through the heavens. Then either a bird snatches him or he tumbles into some in, uh, a dark corner. Okay, so it's something that when people leave a fr- the framework of Islam, they're not leaving it to form a new framework. They're falling lock, stock, and barrel in the contemporary framework, right? In the monoculture that we're that that we live in today. So these are formed by what they list as four very popular concepts and words that are parroted over and over and over and over. The first one being freedom. So in pop culture, it's the radical elimination of all external barriers to achieve maximum happiness. And this to us is really, a, uh, it's feeding a nafs al Okay, It's feeding a nafs al the ego that commands to, to evil. Now why does Allah stop us? Because... The, con- the concept of happiness in Islam is very different than happiness in the secular world. In the secular world, it's the happiness of your carnal soul in general. You're free to do whatever you want, free to, to enjoy, uh, free to have as much pleasure as you want. And no one can stop your pleasure. All modern spiritualities, all of them, have one thing in common. They never say no to your ego. They never say no to your ego. They never say to you, don't have zina. Don't commit zina. Don't have sex before marriage, outside of marriage. However, this way, that way, the other. Don't uh, look at what is haram. They never limit, okay, your carnal desires, right? And if it is, it's only by your own desire to do so. Not out of obedience to somebody else, right? Not out of obedience to a creator or, or anything else. Because there's a big difference. When you're the author of your own morality... It's very different than when you're submitted. And the whole point of Islam is to get the ego to submit to something greater than it. When you create, you can create your own morality. And it could be more strict than Islam. Or, and Judaism. Or Christianity. And, but why is it still going to lead you to arrogance? Because you're the creator of that morality. You made that morality. And that's one of the whole point of, this is a, this is a, a high level abstract uh, you know, level of paganism. Is that, you just worshiping yourself instead of worshiping an idol even the idol is just almost like a meteor because you make the idol too idolatry and paganism itself it's a roundabout way of worshiping yourself because who you made the idol okay the priest makes these prayers and makes stuff up so when you're the creator of your own morality you're truly worshiping yourself even if you're putting your ego down and that's a big difference between tawhid and and this morality so he says that in Islam, freedom is based on servitude to God. This is what we're saying here. Our happiness is not gained by serving our nefs. Our happiness is gained by serving our creator. Right? That's the difference. And by, by falling into the orbit of the khaliq and the creator, all right, then at that point, when, when we fall into that orbit, that's when we are most happy. Right. And that orbit is going to be to apply the sharia in our, in our daily lives. We will find ourselves and our hearts in that orbit. Individual autonomy. The latter is a word formed from the suffixes auto, meaning self, and nomos, meaning law. Autonomy. So the West notion of autonomy literally means giving oneself the law. Okay, That's what we're saying. You create your own morality whereby each person determines what is right and wrong without recourse to anything external to himself. And this is the idea here. And that's what we said, even within Islam, you have to be careful of this. Be very careful of this, even inside of Islam, because the methodology of following Islam by coming to conclusions yourself and then working backwards to find the evidence for it. Whereas the, more, the way that is more aligned with the sunnah 
is that you choose a methodology or an imam. Madhab, meaning, which is a methodology and an imam. Okay? You study them. You might be a common Muslim, but you can study the imams and his basic methodology. It's not going to take you... And if you spent a week reading up on on each imam, that's a month. We're talking about your religion here, so I think a month worth of reading, you know, after work is useful. Uh, it's not asking a lot. So you do that, and then you decide upon that methodology. Now, that methodology, that imam, you are not just following that imam because his methodology has been used through the centuries to answer questions that did not come up in his time. Okay? And the scholars of that madhab, they take his words and they fashion from his words his philosophy of law. Okay? They, they fashion his philosophy. So when, you're, when someone says, oh, I'm going to follow Imam Malik who lived all the, Imam Abu Hanifa who lived 1,400, 1200 years. No, you're following, he set the fundamental methodology. Every generation, new matters came up. The scholars of that time utilize his methodology to answer those questions. So that's why it's, the Hanif, it's still the Hanafi Madhab 700 years later, filled with issues that Abu Hanifa never talked about because they used his method. And the same thing for all the other four madhabs. Until today, a living chain that never dies, where scholars of each madhab today, they take the philosophy, the methodology derived by that, med- uh, by that imam, or in- in- initiated by that imam, even if others filled in details, okay, uh, a- a- and polished it off, and they answer questions that, came, that come up today, which we call noazid. Issues that happen today, that didn't happen in the past, and we need an answer to it. Uh, let me give you a simple example. I give you a very simple example of how a completely modern issue, and I'm not going to, this is, this is a real question, but I'm not going to say it in a way that's going to put anyone on the spot. A husband and wife, they couldn't have kids. So they went through the uh, IVF method, which means that her reproductive, uh, like egg and his sperm, were taken outside from, and, and, and I guess in a lab, they try to fertilize, okay? So his fluid and her egg are outside of their bodies. Now, did that something that existed in the old days? No, right? So now here's the question. That's all fine, it's halal. As long as, I mean, there are parameters for that too, to make sure that these things don't get mixed up. They get divorced and they have a fertilized egg. They do have a fertilized egg still in the freezer. And they get divorced. Is she allowed now to implant that inside of her stomach after the divorce? That's the question. It's not zina, right? It's her egg. With or without his consent, the answer is no, it's haram. Whether he consents or not, why? Because they're divorced. Now, we go back in time for the methodology of answering this question. That Imam Madik was asked the question, and you may find this a little bit crazy, but it's okay because there are a lot of things you don't know. He was asked that a girl married a jinn and got pregnant. He was asked, is this marriage halal or haram? Malik said it is haram not because it doesn't exist or by the sharia it's haram. That a Muslim jinn and a Muslim woman got married by the sharia with witnesses, don't ask how, I don't know, in the jinn world or something, I don't know. He's saying, Maddox saying, he's seen this. He's not saying it's, it's zina, because they're following the rules of marriage. But I am making it forbidden, Maddox says, on the basis of closing a door that would lead to many problems, which is that I would not like to see a woman walking around pregnant, having never been married amongst us human beings, and saying, my husband is unseen. Well, what kind of society we're we going to have after that, right? Every other person comes pregnant. I said, my husband's a jinn. Well, you can't see him. Where was the wedding ceremony? In the jinn world. And nobody saw it. We can't have this, right? So in the same way, we're using that methodology of closing the door of anyone ever being uh, uh, pregnant without a marriage. And the, the, the scholars the Maliki scholars of today use that as the basis to say, no, it's haram. First of all, 
he would have to consent to it, and that's not it. You'd have to be married to him so that you cannot walk around pregnant, all right, saying, like, without a marriage, okay, without a husband, so, and without, like, a record of being married. So, that's the idea there. So that's an example, and that's the methodology of how Muslims today may, if they get whimsical, come look for the ruling in Sharia that they want, then work backwards. No, we say we look for the methodology. And every one of you, you say, oh, I'm not a scholar. Okay, you're not a scholar. Good for you. I'm not a scholar either. No, we're just trying to be fuqaha, meaning learning the rulings and the basis of the rulings. But... You say, I'm not trained, I don't know. You are trained enough. If you're trained enough to buy a car, to buy a house, to marry a woman, you can be trained enough to read the biographies of imams, enough to understand their methodology and pick one. So this, I, excuse I'm just a common Muslim. The ijtihad of the common Muslim is to choose which imam is most worthy of being followed. And then you follow it down the line. What comes from that imam, I accept. That's my religion. That's my book of law. Until it hits a wall where it's impossible or the situations of the world change, then the muftis, the, the current living muftis of that madhab, they're publishing their answers to this all the time. Their, their, their stuff is published on this, on the nawazid, whether it's in a video or it's in an article. Okay? It's out there. Nawazid, new matters that, make it, that we need fatwa for. So this is what's important and this is how to operate.